In the last video, we saw how to apply the rational zeros theorem for monic polynomials. If a number is a root of a monic polynomial, then it must also be a factor of the constant term of that polynomial. Remember, a monic polynomial is one whose leading coefficient is 1. This led us to conclude that in step 1 of our process for factoring polynomials, we should only consider a plus or minus pair of root values if the potential root is a factor of the constant term. Can we generalize the rational zeros theorem to all polynomials, even those with a leading coefficient other than 1? As you may have guessed, the answer is yes. Recall the example from the first video of this section, where we factored 2x squared minus 11x plus 5 to find its roots. We found the roots at x equals 1 over 2 and 5, or 5 over 1. From what we already know about the rational zeros theorem, we would have picked the potential roots as plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 5, as those are the only factors of 5, the constant term. So where does the root at x equals 1 half come from? To see how this root is related to the polynomial, let's determine the factors of both the leading coefficient, 2, and the constant term, 5. 2 only has factors of plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2, and 5 only has factors of plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 5. Notice that both the denominators of the roots are contained within the list of factors of the leading coefficient, 2, and both the numerators of the roots are contained within the list of factors of the constant term, 5. This extends to any polynomial. In general, the rational zeros theorem is as follows. If a rational number, p over q, is a root of a polynomial with integer coefficients, then p must be a factor of the constant term, and q must be a factor of the leading coefficient. Maybe you can see how the rational zeros theorem for monic polynomials was just a special case of this, where q had to be plus or minus 1, since the leading coefficient was 1. Let's see this more general rational zeros theorem in action. Look at this example. Determine all possible roots of p of x, which is 6x cubed plus 7x squared minus 1. Based on what we just learned, our first order of business will be to determine all the factors of both the leading coefficient and the constant term. The leading coefficient, 6, has factors of 1, 2, 3, and 6, right? Not quite. Don't forget to consider both positive and negative values. The constant term, negative 1, has only one plus or minus pair of factors, plus or minus 1. So how do we get the potential roots from these lists of factors? We have to generate all possible rational numbers whose denominators, q, come from the factors of the leading coefficient, and whose numerators, p, come from the factors of the constant term. Let's start by generating all the possible rational roots with a numerator of positive 1. We could have 1 over 1, 1 over negative 1, 1 over 2, 1 over negative 2, 1 over 3, 1 over negative 3, 1 over 6, or 1 over negative 6. Now let's generate all the possible rational roots with a numerator of negative 1. We could have negative 1 over 1, negative 1 over negative 1, negative 1 over 2, negative 1 over negative 2, negative 1 over 3, negative 1 over negative 3, negative 1 over 6, or negative 1 over negative 6. Since a negative divided by a negative gives a positive, some of these potential rational roots are the same, like these two, which are both equal to 1, or these two that are both equal to 1 half, or these two that are both equal to 1 third, or these two which are both equal to 1 sixth. And since a negative divided by a positive and a positive divided by a negative are both negative, there are a few more potential roots that are common to both lists, like these two that are both equal to negative 1, and so on. Our final list of potential rational roots without duplicates is then as follows, plus or minus 1, plus or minus a half, plus or minus a third, and plus or minus a sixth. In the future, we can take the absolute values of the factors of the leading coefficient and constant term, generate only the positive potential rational roots, and then add plus or minus to each to get all potential rational roots. This is all the example asked us to do. We found all the possible roots of p of x. However, I have a little bit more to show you. From here, we could begin our four-step process to factor this polynomial by checking each of these potential roots, but since we have tons of practice doing that already, I'm going to jump right to the actual roots of this polynomial, which are negative 1, negative 1 half, and positive 1 third. Presumably, the corresponding factors are x plus 1, x plus 1 half, and x minus 1 third, 
right? Let's try to write p of x, which is 6x cubed plus 7x squared minus 1, as the product of these three factors. Do you see an issue? If we expand these factors on the right by multiplication, there will be a coefficient of only 1 on the x cubed term, where p of x has a coefficient of 6 on the x cubed term. So clearly the product of the three factors is not equal to the polynomial p of x. So what are the factors of p of x? It turns out that we were on the right track with x plus a half and x minus a third. We just needed to multiply them through by the denominators of their fractional terms. That means we multiply x plus a half by 2, which gives us 2x plus 1. Notice that 2x plus 1 is also set to 0 when x is negative 1 half, so the root at x equals negative 1 half is preserved. Then we'll multiply x minus a third by 3, which gives us 3x minus 1. Again, notice that 3x minus 1 is set to 0 when x equals 1 third, so the root at x equals 1 third is preserved as well. With these two factors, we can now write the correct factored form of our polynomial as x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 1. If we expand these factors by multiplication, we will end up with p of x. Let's do so, starting by multiplying 2x plus 1 by 3x minus 1. This gives us x plus 1 times 6x squared plus x minus 1. Then multiplying by x plus 1 gives us 6x cubed plus 7x squared minus 1, which matches p of x, proving that our new factorization is correct. So as long as you deal with polynomials with integer coefficients, as we do in this course, you should always multiply a factor with a fraction in it by the denominator of its fractional term to get rid of the fraction. You probably see how this can get messy, so I recommend testing integer potential roots, like plus or minus 1, before testing fractional potential roots. Hopefully, that way, the factors that give fractional roots, like 2x plus 1 and 3x minus 1, will be found through factoring a quadratic, like this one, in step 4 of the process for factoring polynomials. Okay, hopefully now you have all the tools you need to determine all rational roots of any polynomial. Be sure to practice, and good luck!